Could it really all start in your head? Heart disease, digestive problems, depression, addiction, even cancer. So many times these serious health conditions are brought on by what we think and what we feel. But we can learn to cope and even thrive by exploring that connection between mind and body. It's mind over matter when what matters is your health. Hi, I'm Erica Petrini, and I am delighted to welcome you to Access Health. On today's Access Health, we're talking about the connection between brain and body and how you can take action to prevent negative, toxic thoughts and emotions from creating some serious health problems in your life. Our expert team and my good friends are here to help us flesh out this story. Let's welcome Dr. Dennis Holmes, a renowned cancer researcher and surgeon, our fabulous nutritional expert, Janet Zapala, <laughs> and our amazing fitness expert, Dave Sinclair. You like how I sang that name? Oh, yeah. I just love the way you say all of our names. <laughs> Thank you. Well, what a gorgeous group I have with me. Oh, look who's talking. So <laughs> Thank you. We did take a little long in the makeup chairs today, didn't we? Paid off, you guys look great. That's we all try, that matters. We try. <laughs> so we've got such a good show ahead of us today. Yes, a lot of good information to share. And yeah. so very important. Yeah. So should we get right to it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's start with you, Dr. Holmes. So we know we should all be seeing our family doctors on a regular basis, but should we also be at least open to seeing a mental health professional as well? Erica, that's a great question. Now, not everyone needs a mental health professional, but everyone should be open to seeing one if there is a need. Mm -hmm. You know, life is pretty stressful these days, and chronic stress can cause a number of health conditions and make existing health conditions worse, including cancer. Yeah, that's true. You know, you, there's mental, there's emotional, and we really need to be healthy in those two ways, but also physical. And I think it gets back to good old mom. She always told us to eat our veggies, right? She did, yeah. over and over and over Smart again. lady, because we really need to feed our bodies and our minds. It, it's a real phenomenon. Our viewers may know it as you are what you eat, but yeah. basically what it means is that there is a link between what you take into your body and what you produce in terms of physical and mental health. In the medical circle, we call that the food-mood connection. Mm. Mm. Food-mood connection, I get that one, doctor. I'm, it's true, when I don't eat a well-balanced meal, when I'm making poor choices, watch out, folks. Uh-oh. You will know. <laughs> no, not you guys. I it's cannot not believe you. that for a second. Yeah, my husband will, though. Maybe not you guys. <laughs> but really, you need a good combination of things. Yeah. Complex carbs, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and lots of good, clean water every day. We have to stay hydrated. Our bodies are 80% water. And if we do, we're at our brightest and we have lots of energy. But there is one more aspect to this whole thing. Exercise, mm -hmm. of course. And I feel like there's so many people that need to be talked into exercising. They have some sort of mental block. What do you say to those people, They need Dave? to be dragged kicking and screaming Dragging, to yeah. exercise. But that's not the point. You know, the point is, I always tell people, make it fun. Yeah. Now, if you are a type A personality, a hard charging, I gotta get everything. What? Yeah. Yeah. About that. Are talking about me? Anybody at this about? table? Can we talk? Yeah, for for people who are like that, who really do want to get all those things done and have very stressful existences, you all the more need that mental, yeah. physical, and emotional release. That release, yes. Yeah, but in said. order to get that, what I tell people is go outside and play. There's a scientific basis to this as well. Exercise raising the, raises the endorphin level, which is a chemical produced by the brain. It yeah. improves concentration, boosts energy, it releases stress. In fact, after a long day of surgery, the thing that I most look forward to is going out to play tennis because it helps me relax and helps me sleep better at night. Play. Yeah, play. I don't know where you get the energy after a long day of surgery. Type A. Incredible. <laughs> Energizer <laughs> bunny we have here. Play, that really is the key. You want to be fit and happy. You right. want to work out but feel like it's fun because right. that's really what it's all about. And we're always thought to believe that we have to work out in the gym. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with the gym. I go to gyms. Now, Eric, you go to gym. I'm a gym rat. Hey, listen, if being a gym rat works for you, that's it fine. Because it works Believe for some me. people. Look, look, look at that. No, uh, it does work for some people. Uh, people love to lift weights for 90 minutes or, you know, be on the stair climber for 45 minutes. If that works for you, knock yourself out. But for a lot of people, they don't want to do that. Yeah. So to those people, I say kayak, rollerblade mm -hmm. with the dog, play tennis, play golf. 
do whatever, join a Zoom class or whatever yes. it is. But let's find something that you like to do because really it comes down to this. Mm -hmm. If you're having fun, you stay consistent. Yeah. If you stay consistent, you get results. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, no, it's so true. And for me, actually, you know, the gym is the easiest thing for me, but it's a place where I can meet like-minded people. And to be mm -hmm. honest, it's my selfish time. That's my me time. Mm -hmm. However, I need to ask you, how much should we be exercising on a regular basis? I think a good goal is 30 minutes of moderate exercise five times a week. Now that may sound okay. like a lot. When you first say it, that sounds like a lot. But you mentioned your me time, mm -hmm. okay? If it's your salvation, if it's the thing that decompresses you, that gets your mind right, mm -hmm. then when it, it goes by because it's something you look forward to. Dave, that's particularly important for women. Two and a half hours of exercise per week has been shown to reduce the risk of cancer by 20%, breast mm. cancer in particular. And if they can get up to four hours a week, it reduces the risk of breast cancer by 40%, which is a profound number. I have an idea. Let's change it from exercise to play. Two and a half hours of play a week. Okay, we've got to give them a little more direction then, I think, because who knows what some people's play is. <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> so we've got some great information today, and there's more information on what we've talked about on our website. We also have got some some great suggestions on the website about how to recognize and identify negative thoughts and emotions and how to be aware of the impacts they have on our bodies. Now tell us what's on your mind. What are some of the ways that you deal with mind over matter in your daily life? Next on Access Health, have you given much thought about brushing your teeth today? I bet you haven't. Well, you might when we tell you the shocking results of not doing it. <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> We've all heard that oral health and whole body wellness are connected, but new research tells us that people with poor dental health tend to have more general health problems, not surprising. Well, with us today, Michelle Strange, dental hygienist, is here with us. Thank you so much for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Welcome, Michelle. I, um, Thank you. I have to ask you, what, in your opinion, are the main causes of poor dental health, and do you think there's this mind-body connection? I think there's a slight bit of a mind-body connection. If you're a real anxious person or you suffer from anxiety, you can grind your teeth a little bit mm. more. If you're suffering from depression, you probably aren't taking good care of your whole body, including your oral health, because there's such a correlation these days with studies showing us that um, systemic health and poor oral health are so linked. There's a, a large body of data linking periodontal disease mm -hmm. or disease of the teeth and gums and bone uh, with other health conditions such as heart disease, wow. diabetes, mm -hmm. even cancer. Yes, yes. And it's also uh, whatever is occurring in the body can affect the mouth mm -hmm. because if you're taking certain, certain medications for some of these uh, systemic diseases, they can give you dry mouth, which is mm -hmm. known as xerostomia, which mm -hmm. can increase your decay rate. So can you tell us, Michelle, what would you recommend as a daily dental routine? Well, brushing first and foremost and doing it for at least two minutes. Mm -hmm. Brushing is where we start, but really and truly, it's only gonna clean about 60% of our teeth. We really have to remember that we have to get in between our teeth because that is where the inflammation what starts. What about flossing? Flossing, it's, it's difficult. I mean, not everybody can do it. And some people, they use floss, no problems, but other people have larger spaces in between their teeth. And then that's where this line by Tepi comes in. And I just want to stop you for one mm -hmm. moment because going back to the brushing yes. and the toothbrushes, yeah. I see you have them here. Overall, you want to make sure you have a soft bristle. Mm -hmm. Gone are the days of a hard or medium bristle because then you start to brush too hard. But the bristles, they're the main function. And you want a nice little tapered bristle and you want to be able to hold it well, which is what is so great about this Tepi brush here. You can really grab it. This one is so incredibly soft. So is this one. It is. It Not is. for everyone, though. No, and there's some that are made for after surgery, mm -hmm. but your everyday brush should just be a soft bristle brush. And the brush. teeth is so fine at the end. It's beautiful. Yes. Absolutely. Really yes. It. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so now we're deal we've dealt with the outside, yeah. but really the more important part is what happens in, in between, between the teeth. And exactly. it's so hard to access. It's very hard to, as a hygienist to say, everyone brush and floss. Because mm -hmm. one, you might not be able to hold the floss. You might not have very good fine motor skills to get your hands in the way back. Plus, you might also have larger spaces in between, between your teeth, and you need a little something extra when you get into those larger mm -hmm. spaces. So that's why this line by Tepi it comes in all different sizes. And they're nice and pretty, but they're not just beautiful colors. The colors actually mean something. They're sized. So it's not one size fits all. So you can't just go to the store and grab your little tiny brush and think that that's going to fit everywhere. What does <laughs> a different length mean? I'm interested in knowing that. Sometimes it's just for dexterity. Um, you have this 
side where you can grab it. It comes with a cap. You can put it on the back. It actually lengthens the mm. handle a little bit. But these are called interdental brushes, the yes. Tepe interdental brushes. Correct. Absolutely fabulous. And really, I've used them. We were all sort yes. of um, trying to grab them <laughs> after lunch. I feel like I need to take a dental break now. This one feels about right for me, but there's a big one over there. There's a big one there. Interested. And everybody's a little afraid of this yeah, big one. But you know, sometimes we lose a natural tooth and we have a large gap. This fits perfectly oh, in that area. Okay. So this is why I was saying it's just not one size fits all, mm -hmm. because we all have certain parts of our mouth that you know, we have a space here, we have a missing tooth there, mm -hmm. maybe have a little crowding in the front. So can we use these for braces, bridges, and yes. dental implants as well? These actually make lives so much easier around those certain dental appliances. But the great thing about this line is that they are plastic coated, the wire is, mm -hmm. so you can use them around implants without harming the, the titanium implant. They can fail. They can have disease around them. They will never decay, which is great, mm -hmm. but you can have bone disease and gum disease, also known as peri-implantitis, and they can fail, and you can lose that very costly implant. Proper cleaning. Yes. Proper and when do I know that I have a real issue, though, doctor? Well, if someone is having persistent bleeding that yes. doesn't recover after a few days of proper care, yes. I think they should consider maybe that there's another problem. And sometimes there's a link, as we've said so far, between dental disease and other conditions. Yes. For example, did you know that poor dental health is as strong a predictor of heart disease as mm -hmm. your cholesterol level. Well, we're going to try to prevent any of that by yes. doing the right thing. I've got my tool, my two new tools. Please, for your See, hygienist. That's for you. That's for you. <laughs> thank you so much, Doctor, of course, and thank you, Michelle, thank for you. joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. You. You'll find thank much you. more information about Tepe Interdental Brush on our website, accesshealth.tv. So keep up the good attitude and go brush up that smile, please. Now, earlier on the show, we talked a bit about how our moods can affect our eating habits. But what if what we eat changes our brain chemistry? It's kind of a catch-22, right? Yeah, I know. But we'll tell you how to break out of that dangerous spiral in just a moment. Well, welcome back. We've talked a lot about how our mental and emotional states can directly cause health problems. Let's turn the tables a bit now and talk about how our body conditions, specifically whether we're getting the right nutrition every day, can help resolve psychiatric problems. With us today is David Hardy, founder of Hardy Nutritionals, and we're rejoined, of course, by Janet Zapala, our nutritional expert. Good to be here. David, I'm so Thank glad you. that you're here. You've developed a nutritional formulation that has been studied extensively in the treatment of mood disorders. That's right. So tell us, what is the scope of the problem? It's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Harvard University statistics say that in any given year, one in four in the population Incredible. will have a diagnosable mental illness. And you know, I think that women especially tend to suffer the most. Absolutely. Because they suffer yeah. in silence. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be a burden to Often their family and friends. Speaking of family, you actually have some personal experience with mental illness in your own family. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? I do. Several years after we started mm -hmm. studying this, and I was working with hundreds of other people with mental illness, and so I began to understand more about the illness itself. Ironically, I came home one day and, and my son was completely psychotic. He'd had a psychotic break and was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And about a year after that experience, my daughter was diagnosed after the birth of a baby with postpartum psychosis, mm -hmm. which is a little more rare than depression, but, but still there. And those, those experiences uh, were devastating. Mm -hmm. I mean, my experience with other people with mental illness is one thing, but it doesn't hold a candle no. to when you experience with someone that you love. Your kids. So David, was there any sort of silver lining? The biggest thing that came out of it was an incredible desire to legitimize this so that my grandchildren and your grandchildren and millions of others don't have to go through what my family went through. That yes. kind of motivation probably would not have come had I not had that powerfully emotional experience with my own children. It seems that people who suffer with mental health problems mm -hmm. may be nutrient deficient when it comes to what they're eating daily. There is mounting scientific evidence proving that minerals and vitamins indeed can have a powerful treatment effect on mental illness. Very powerful. And as an example of that now, we're going to hear from Dr. Charles Popper, a clinical psychiatrist and long-term instructor at Harvard Medical School who has used David's specialized formulas in his practice. I first became involved in nutrition as a psychiatrist observing a 10-year-old boy who had bipolar disorder, a very serious 
form of it. He was having s major temper tantrums for an hour, two hours, four hours a day, every day for some months. He took a vitamin mineral supplement and within five days his symptoms cleared entirely. The tantrums were gone on the fifth day of treatment and he wasn't even irritable, he wasn't even grouchy. Now we don't have any psychiatric drugs that can do that. I've never seen a psychiatric drug do that in any case. So based on that one child I began to pay attention to nutrition and to the use of vitamins and minerals in particular to treat mood disorders. We don't always see that quick of a response mm -hmm. with the supplement, but it was a great way to introduce Dr. Popper to nutrition because nutrition was not on his radar screen at all. Now, it's just not any ordinary supplement that has this sort of effect. I know when I go into a drugstore or a nutritional center, I'm overwhelmed. I have no idea what combination, which form. I mean, it's it's just complicated. When you choose a supplement that's not complete, when you choose one that's not properly balanced, mm -hmm. when you choose one that's not very bioavailable, you don't get a very good response. We've found what the right amount is. We've also found a, a special way to put together our products so that the minerals become more effective and it's very it's mm -hmm. very significant. The minerals we process in a way that combines the inorganic molecule with organic molecules so that it makes it into an organic molecule that is in some cases a hundred times or more more soluble than the, That's the key. inorganic form. This is pretty important and mm -hmm. we're going to let Dr. Popper weigh in on this one. Especially in psychiatry when we're using these as medical treatments we look for very much higher quality uh, vitamins and minerals that are demonstrated to have much higher absorption rates than the routine commercial formulations. The power of absorption. Right. What we eat, we have to absorb in order to get those necessary nutrients. I could not agree more with Dr. Popper on this one. Our research speaks for itself. Right. Mm -hmm. There are over 23 medical journal publishings from 15 universities, four different countries. Our supplement is the most studied supplement for mood disorders on earth. We're excited about the research and the verification that it gives what we do. It is so exciting, David. And Dr. Popper is another prominent example who believes very much in this research. Let's take a look. If it turns out with more effective studies that we can treat depression, bipolar disorder, attention deficit disorder, perhaps other psychiatric disorders, with vitamins and minerals that were as effective as the current psychiatric drugs but with much fewer side effects and better long-term stability and with less mental fog. If that were to turn out to be true then we would have a much better set of alternative treatments to be able to offer patients who are currently struggling with these conditions. So Dr. Popper clearly agrees that the use of specific combinations of vitamins and minerals can have a big impact in the way that people practice psychiatry. When you understand how minerals and vitamins work in the body, that they're the basis of every metabolic process, they become not only the most logical, but also the most likely cause mm -hmm. of all kinds of illness. Mm -hmm. So research does show that they positively impact and reduce the level of cancer and mm -hmm. heart disease and Alzheimer's and many other chronic illnesses that we suffer from. Why can't I get that from food? Why do I need a supplement? It's just not in the food anymore. So the best approach to good health, of course, is always prevention, preventing illness using a good, a complete nutritional supplement, I think, is a solid step in the right direction. David, thank you so much for being here. A wealth of knowledge. Thank you. And Jenna, thank you as always. Pleasure. And wow, what a depth of experience Dr. Popper brought to this discussion. Thanks for being with us today to talk about mind over matter when what matters is your health and well-being. I'm Erica Vetrini, and on behalf of Dr. Dennis Holmes, Janet Zapala, Dave Sinclair, we look forward to seeing you next time on Access Health.
I access health by playing tennis six hours a week. I access health by making sure I eat my greens every single day. I access health by doing a daily stretching routine. It's quick, it's efficient. I access health by going dancing with my fellow mom friends on a really good mom's night out. Tell us your stories. How do you access health?